Bunch of questions, Tommy. It's your boy back again, the one and only your motivation guy, the one who believes in you, the one who is rooting for you, the one who will never stop believing that you're going to fulfill your dreams, okay? So you can't stop believing either, because I'm not. I'm not giving up, so you better not give up. Listen, I'm here to bring you guys the latest and best tips to make you guys like the most incredible Fortnite player you could possibly be. Today, we're going to be going over some of the nastiest habits that you can have in Fortnite. Yeah, I said it, nasty. Like, these habits can break a champion, you know, from making it before you even had time to shine. But luckily for you, you got your motivation guy and you got us steering you in the right direction so today let's polish you up a little bit so we can get rid of all those bad habits and replace them with beneficial ones you guys ready for this well man it's time to get my favorite candy what is that y'all help me out it's that bunch of crunch and let's get this going you know, bad habits can make you stumble in almost any aspect of life. Fortnite, it's no different, man. You know, often the mistakes that we, you know, make are not because we are technically bad players, but because the habits are so low key, it's just ingrained in us that they simply just don't happen without us even noticing them. However, once you've identified that you have these bad habits, you can just start working on these to really get rid of them. In fact, like you might be surprised by what we consider a bad habit. All right, so let's just start off with something that we all have experienced. Like one of the most common bad habits that you can have, you know, just from playing Fortnite is collecting every single weapon that you can instead of managing your inventory and having an optimized loadout. Why does this happen? Well, you know, this source of this habit actually comes from the need to feel that you have to feel prepared for anything that might happen. You know, weapons fit the bill. I get it. Considering you're going to need these in a variety of different situations. Like the AR is probably one of the most standard weapons in the shooter games right now. They usually have decent range and accuracy, making them the safest to use. Like you gotta pick that up, I get it. Now, the SMG is a beast this season, and with an impressive fire rate, it can be easy to spray enemies into oblivion. Better pick that up too. But what about the sniper rifle? I mean, you can't pass up the chance at hitting your opponent from afar, right? Now, add on the shotguns for the double pump strategy, the ranger assault rifle for the more common aim down style, and the Spider-Man mythic, suddenly you just seem to have a big problem now, right? By now, you're seeing the pattern. You no longer have any space for healing items, and the utilities are out the window. So Managing your inventory is important because once you get to late game, there's going to be a few options just for getting the items you need to survive. Just because you can run into a healing item while you're rotating doesn't mean you should stop. Simply stop moving and drop a weapon to pick up the heal. Apply and then pick up the weapon again. This is a waste of time and it doesn't give you guys any items to use on the fly later. So the best options are normally three weapons max and two healing items. You also want to leave some space so you can just swap out an item for utility items such as the harpoon or the Spider-Man web slingers. You know, you should also take some time to preset the item slots so picking them up will be much easier and you have everything in pretty much the same location. All right, guys, so for more help on the best weapons and items you need to have in your inventory, visit ProGuys.com by clicking on the link below. There you're going to be able to select from a wide variety of coaches that can help you elevate your game and really work out strategies. Just remember, there is no such thing as an impossible meta. With professional coaching, you become a master who is capable of excelling. If you've been grinding arena, then you know what it's like to really exit one game and start the process of entering the next. And so given enough time to start to get into the zone and your brain stops, you know, having to take time to process information, your fingers will also build up momentum and become as flexible as they can be for maximum use. This is the same concept for real life sports where players need to warm up, you know, for big games so they can be ready and loosened up. Casual games are quick for starting a new match. Just make the selection after death and just getting put back in the lobby. You know, in arena, it just takes a bit longer with you needing to exit arena in order to start a new match. However, tournaments are a bit different. Like you don't get a game to really mess up in before going in for the real thing. Like you may be able to play multiple rounds during an event, but that doesn't mean you can just use up your first match to warm up. And so once the competition is started, you better be bringing your A game. Otherwise, you're gonna be finding yourself having a bad time out there. So because of this, it's important for you guys to warm up your aim and your building before a competition. And so this is something many gamers tend to forget since they feel like their skills can just carry them over from game to game once they've mastered the craft. However, skill is also supplemented by momentum and the more momentum you have, the easier it's going to be to get into the groove. So before playing in a competition or even when starting a session of arena grinding, take the time, you know, run through some aim training routines and some building scenarios. This is going to allow you to drop into the match already having built some momentum. And this is also going to give you a fantastic advantage. And it's also going to, you know, reinforce your good habits of warming up before an important match. All right, Creative is a really fun mode that offers plenty of different routines and game modes that can help players maximize their mechanical skills. In fact, you know, many players are going to become creative kings in the process since they've mastered the art of 1v1 and can perform some pretty impressive and, you know, pretty fast builds. However, if you want to be a competitive player, then you got to step out of Creative and start grinding Arena. Why? 
Good question. Because the battle royale is where the tournament is going to be taking place. Like the bad habit in this scenario is believing that if you can become a creative king, those same skill sets are automatically just going to transfer over when you jump into arena. And the truth is, is that they don't, unless you take a few extra steps to adjust. In fact, you know, the creative experience is a bit more controlled than a hectic game of Arena would be. You know, there are more factors to take into consideration, making Battle Royale a much less predictable environment. Your mechanical skills are just part of what won't translate 100%. Like, there are also meta skills that you need to learn, such as the optimal landing spots, methods of rotations, and even what to do during each stage of the game. You know, this is something that you can't get out of creative. You just won't. And unless you want to take a confidence hit, then, you know, you got to just start translating those skills, learning Battle Royale right away. All right, so there's nothing wrong with taking a break from Fortnite. You know, we all got things that we need to take care of in real life. And, you know, it's only natural that at times you're not going to be able to play or even log on. However, if you do plan on going pro at some point, then you need to be able to, at the very least, keep up with the meta and stay in the loop as new information drops. For example, like if you turn back the clock, the ADS Assault Rifle was an absolute beast for tearing down builds and beaming opponents. However, if you log in today, you're going to be disappointed to find that the ADS AR has been nerfed and it can no longer even through builds like it could before. This makes the weapon more balanced, but if you weren't there when the changes were made, then you wouldn't have noticed that it is now in effect. This kind of change can and will throw you off your game if you don't prepare for it. So if this happens to you during a tournament, then that's gonna be a real shame since other players will already know what weapons have been nerfed and what weapons have been added, as well as have already gotten accustomed to the changes. Right now, the chiller grenade has been unvaulted in comp, and this item can actually be used on opponents as well as yourself. So using this is going to freeze up your feet and give you guys a sudden boost in speed. It could also trip up your opponents when they least expect it. And so these are the kind of things that can change while you're away. And believe us, these changes can happen within a span of a few days. Okay, so have you ever heard the term pick a spot and grind it? Like this is a common mentality players have on the road to becoming a Fortnite pro. In fact, like it's actually some pretty solid advice. Unlike casual games of Fortnite, competitive requires you to know the map inside and out so you can get you know the loot quickly and be prepared to fight out players who happen to land in the same spot as you. So with that in mind guys, picking a spot and grinding it sounds like a really good idea. The truth is a common mistake with taking this advice is really taking it at face value and just getting into the habit of only grinding in one spot. And so this limits your knowledge of the rest of the entire map, but completely relies on the bus driver just going through the same route each and every time as well. In fact, like you should have at least two other spots that you're really completely familiar with if you want the best advantage during a competitive match. You know, having multiple options prevent you guys from having the sudden realization that you're gonna need to glide extra far just to land. And sometimes the opposite is true. Your drop spot ends up being right on the path and becomes highly contested as a result. And so by having three options, you can match maximize your chances of choosing a proper spot depending on you know what you're going for so do you want to try landing in a contested area and possibly get more kills or perhaps you would rather land in a mostly empty area but one where you can fill up on mats quickly and get some chests all to yourself either way now that you have more than one option to choose from i'm telling you man it's gonna be a lot easier for you all right so for more on landing spots do not forget to check out proguys.com you can perfect your drop spot and master the early game no matter what skill level you're coming in from Watch your question, and that's gonna be it for today's video. Once again, I'm your friend, the one and only, your motivation guy, the one who believes in you, the one who is rooting for you, the one who says it all the time. I am your number one fan, and I'm gonna stick by that. Hey, keep going, don't quit in your dreams, keep grinding, be the best person you can be, not only in this game, but also in life. If you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel, connect to me on my Instagram at your motivation guy. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.